How much do you need to spend on a dash cam? We've got three different models here, different price points. We're looking at the Viofo A129, which costs £230. Roger's going to give us his thoughts on the Nextbase 312, which he's been using for a couple of years now. And we're going to have a look at this one, which only costs £25. And I got it for £17 in the Black Friday sale. So let's have a look at all three of them and see how they stack up. So I bought this Nextbase dash cam from Halfords. In actual fact, I bought two of them because it was on special offer. It was around about 80 quid. My daughter's boyfriend thought it'd be good if he had one. Three years each without any trouble at all. They've got a micro SD card. Once it gets full up, it just overwrites the footage, keeps overwriting it. Sometimes I take the micro SD card out, download all the footage. I normally do it when we're on holiday. So we get some lovely scenery, you know, sometimes we're driving through the mountains. So this is only forward facing and it's all fully automatic. I don't have to do anything to it. Start the engine, drive off and the thing starts recording. So I love it. I love it for the simplicity. Now, interestingly, I was told that if you want to use this as evidence, it has to be able to detect GPS because then it tells you where the incident occurred and at what time it occurred. So that can then be given to the police as proper evidence. If you don't have that GPS, they could say, well, it, ha it didn't happen that day, it happened another day, and who's to say where it happened? So the key thing about it is obviously that you want to be able to read that number plate of that vehicle. You know, if somebody, somebody cuts you up or causes an accident and goes, you really want to be able to just zoom in, freeze the frame and read that number plate. It's not always possible, but it is possible. I've done it a few times, but it obviously gets harder at night. It's a very pretty looking picture, but there's no real detail in it. I wouldn't be without one now. And actually the times that I've swapped vehicles over, like when we've come back from holiday and I've left this in the camper bus and I've driven off without it, I'm thinking, oh, sod's law, today is going to be the day when somebody pulls out in front of me, causes an accident. So I've had a few incidents on there a few things I've recorded. There is a button, by the way, that you can just press. If you see something that's a bit hairy, like some nutcase has swapped over three lanes or done something stupid, you can actually press the button and that preserves that last five minutes or so of recording. And then you can take it and download it on your, your laptop or whatever you want to do. Uh, it doesn't look behind you. That's probably one of the things that I could do with is somebody you know, a camera behind as well as in front. In fact, I'd love to have one out each side because the number of people that I see flying down the motorway in the outside lane texting is unbelievable. And I'd love to be able to capture them and report it to the police. I think it's the, I think it's the curse of the modern age that people texting while they're driving. Whoever thought they were a good enough driver to send texts at the same time as they're driving a lethal machine down the outside lane, but there you go. Now, you might struggle to justify spending 230 pounds on a dash cam. I mean, most cameras have the same features like a G sensor for protecting recordings of impacts, wide viewing angle, looped recording so you don't have to worry about the memory card filling up, wide dynamic range so you see detail in the bright and the dark areas, night vision, but not that kind of night vision. So let's see how easy they are to install in your car without having wires dangling everywhere. Now I've noticed that this doesn't have one of those suction cups that you get with the Tom Tom and a lot of other devices, which I actually quite like. I've never had one of them fall off apart from when the screen's really wet, but this is just a sticker. Now, I don't think they've got an awful lot of confidence in this because they give you a packet here with two spare stickers for each camera. So now to get a good contact, obviously we need to make sure it's not wet or greasy. So I've cleaned up. And now I'm going to take this sticker off. Now, one thing I will say is don't put it up too high because if you put it in the area which is outside of the windscreen wipers, that's a dirty zone. So unless you clean your car every day, well, I certainly don't. Uh, so I'm just going to place this just underneath the dirty zone, making it sound like it's an official area, the dirty zone, better than danger zone. Okay, so now it does look like it's facing down and you haven't got that ability to pivot it because it's not a screen mount with a ball head. So that is now firmly stuck on there. Yeah, I mean, that's very firm. That is not gonna come off anytime soon. Now, as I said, they give you this tool for taking the trim off. Now, I've had a little look at, I've started to plan my cable runs and I've got, as I say, the long cable to go to the rear camera. Here's the shorter cable that goes to your cigarette lighter, your cigar lighter. 
Don't see many smokers nowadays, do you? Probably more likely to need a vaping socket. I've got a very awkward cable run. Now, if I use that tool to pull off a bit of trim, I might be able to get this bit off. So I could run the cable. I think what I'll do is I'll run it into here. There's a gap inside here. So I can get it in there, run it down there. So I don't want to talk too much about the trim because everybody's car is different. So I'm just going to run the cable. We'll make good another time. I might give our friends at Sussex Installations a call so they can plumb it in properly and give it power without going into that cigarette lighter. So in an ideal world, they would take a feed. I'm sure there's electrics in here somewhere. I know that they're very clever and they could probably do it so it doesn't look messy. I mean, look, look at this cable here. That's a lot of thick cable. I'll probably run it inside that trim there like that oh there we go it's not too bad yeah so that's what i'll do i'll probably hide it in there this is going to be ugly for a while so before i start burying cables inside the car obviously i want to power it up and make sure it works take the plastic off the screen oh lovely ah i forgot the sd card now we've got to go and get a card Now the VOFO has the best picture quality out of the three cameras, you'd expect that because it's the most expensive. And it's not just down to the fact that it's a 4K camera and it's got that Exmor processor. It's also the fact that it's got a glass lens and a lot of the cheaper models have a plastic lens. As you can see here, the pictures are really good. If we go over to the rear camera, this is only 1080p HD, but it still looks nice, but maybe recording two streams of 4K is just too much for this unit. The screen on the VOFO is quite small, but then you don't really want it to be that big because you're not going to be looking at it. Once you start the engine, the screen comes on for a couple of minutes and then it goes off and it leaves a red light just to let you know that it's recording. Now I set this to record at the highest quality and it ripped through that 32 gig card in no time. So I lowered the bit rate and set the quality to medium because you never know when you're going to want to go back a few days to pick up on something which could be used as evidence. Now some of these dash cams come with a memory card, some don't, but if you're buying, don't buy cheap. When I first got a dash cam, I went on this trip to Italy and I've got an unbranded memory card and when I got back home I found that about 80% of the footage was corrupt and I couldn't do anything with it and it was really annoying. So that 512 gigabyte card that you see on eBay for £10 is not worth it, trust me. So you want to get brands like Kingston or SanDisk and Samsung, Toshiba, Alexa, probably a few other good brands. If it's unbranded, avoid it. Really, the kindest thing I can say about the Sontong is that it's better than nothing and the price is less than an SD card that you're going to put in it. So I don't think anyone would expect too much from it. The number plates are hard to read unless the car's right in front of you and it's not moving. At times the visibility isn't great, but you've got to remember this is the same price as a big takeaway pizza. The pictures from the next base look a little bit grainy, but I think this is a side effect of the sharpening they use. When you watch the video, you might not think the number plates are very clear, but when you pause it, you can see here that it's really crisp. It's got this click and go mount so you can take it out easily, but it does make it the least discreet and bulkiest of the dash cams. Now, I don't think anybody expects night vision to be that spectacular, but there's a problem with all three of these cameras, and that is, at night time, you can't see any number plates of the car right in front of you, or in the case of the VOFO behind you, because the lights from your car are just blurring the number plate out. So the only ones you're going to see are the cars that are parked off to the side. The Sontong even has the cheek to say that it's got super night vision with an image. Look at this image of a perfectly clear number plate. Just so misleading because what it actually does is nothing like that. It's absolutely terrible. So let's answer the question, how much do you need to spend on a dash cam? If this video quality looks okay to you, then the answer is around 30 quid with an SD card, but I guarantee you'll regret not pushing your budget past 60 quid to get GPS that can track your location, speed and cover you legally. Once we get past 100 pounds, you can have features like 4K resolution with a separate rear camera. Some of them have a cloud record backup as well. It's worth noting though that a 4K resolution doesn't guarantee good picture quality and a 4K model at 50 quid might not look as good as an HD one at the same price. So if you think 230 quid is a lot for a dash cam, think again because this Blackview DR900S is 700 pounds, that's with a 256 gigabyte card. You don't get a lot more for your money at this price point, but one great feature this has is that you can see a live remote video feed through the app. Another interesting model is this Garmin Drive Assist, which is a combined sat-nav and dash cam, but I think the dash cam features are quite basic. 
So once you've got your dash cam up and running, you're gonna be catching stupid drivers like this here and this silly who can't wait to get out onto the A12. Found this great little website called rapedriver.co.uk and you can leave a message and a picture or a video to let the world know what a complete the person has just been. It's even got a little hall of shame league table at the top right hand side. I've got a funny feeling I'm going to be cutting this part of the video out for legal reasons later, but anyway, enjoy ratedriver.co.uk. So come back to Skill Builder soon, hit subscribe, hit the bell, and make sure you don't miss our next video.